So Boris Johnson has come under fire during his visit to Scotland from fishing leaders who told him that his Brexit deal had fallen short of expectations, you know. They were told that you know, during the referendum we'd be able to get our fishing waters back, we can be like Norway, we can be like Switzerland, we can be like so many other countries. And that didn't happen. And fishermen in Scotland are mad and apparently they were, you know, they were hitting Boris Johnson with some pelters there, some mean words. Fisher, fisheries leaders warned of a hemorrhage of foreign workers in the industry in the wake of the UK's departure from the EU single market and customs union. You know, less f- kind of EU um, citizens are coming here to work within these industries, which I think tip- can be se- is typically seasonal work. Um, they're not coming here and they're not helping the industry out like we need. We need, um, you know, seasonal workers and, you know, workers in general from the EU to help push the economy. That's not happening. You know, fishing, fisheries, you're talking about skilled work as well, generally. He heard complaints about Boris, heard complaints about new red tape. It's not new red tape, is it? It's red tape we have fallen foul of. Let's let's be real here. And delays resulting from Brexit, which have hit the industry north of the border. Scotland, you know, fishing is very popular over there and there are a lot of fishermen. And they're more willing to, you know, uh, you know, get attack the government over their kind of false promises than, you know, English fishermen are or even Welsh fishermen are, which is just odd. The Prime Minister was joined by Business Secretary Kwasi Kwarteng. Scotland's um, office minister, David um, Dudick, and Scotland's Tory leader, Douglas Ross. I mean, those two or those three people had some alliteration in their name there. Incredible stuff. So for a meeting um, of a number of fishing organisations in Fraserburgh, I'm going to say, on Thursday, Scottish Seafood Association executive James Buchan challenged Mr Johnson over the number of staff lost in the industry as a result of Brexit, which has dramatically reduced the number of seasonal workers in Scotland and had an impact on the seasonal seafood sector. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, if you can't get the amount of fishermen you need, or sorry, fisher people, I should say, um, then you're not going to catch as much fish as you would normally get. If you don't have the staff within processing, you're not going to be able to process the fish, which means fish gets wasted, essentially. You can't, you know, it can't be used because... Uh, seafood, fresh seafood, has a very short shelf life. If you don't have the HGV drivers to drive the fish to the um, processing plants or to the shops or for export, another problem. Following the meeting, Mr. Buchan, I saw said I sh- I saw assurances that the government would work closely with us to resolve the critical shortage of labour. I mean that ain't gonna happen, dog. He agreed that a campaign was required to encourage young people into the industry and on the need for direct action to stem the hemorrhage of overseas workers that has occurred since the 1st of January. Unless they're put on the emergency visa list, um, that's not, nothing will change from that. Mr Buchan was also among the sector leaders to tell the Prime Minister his EU trade deal, which allowed EU fleets largely unchall- uh, unchanged access to UK waters until 2026 had fallen short of expectations. Like, what did you guys expect? We knew the EU weren't going to buckle on this. It's either you get the current deal we have with regards to fisheries, or you go back to the old 12-mile limit or whatever, but then what happens? All your fish exports face tariffs. And we know people in Britain don't eat a lot of fish. Um, a lot of it gets exported what's the plan here mate that's what i'm asking because you have no idea what you're talking about mr buchan elizabeth mcdonald the chief executive of the F- scottish fishermen's um federation said mr johnson ha- had a duty to support the sector between now and when the access for eu fishermen expires i don't know what the hell's going on in this video sorry about that i mean yeah but the, again if if the uk doesn't renew this fishing agreement in 2026 the EU are going to hit us with massive tariffs on fishing. That's what's going to happen. Like, do you guys not understand this? I don't get it. And you're the chief executive of the Scottish Fishermen's Federation. Like, are you, how are you failing to understand that? It's either you agree to a similar deal to what we have now in 2026, or you face tariffs. You know, I think you're talking around between 10 and 30 percent that's going to be added. And not to mention the fact that a lot of people in the EU may end up boycotting British fish at that point. Why? because we screwed over their industries. Like, come on, people. The Prime Minister has spoken previously of an El Dorado of, of, an El Dorado of fish from 2026 onwards. You know, of course he's going to promise, you know, 2026, we're going to deliver again, just like we did this time. Oh, wait, you didn't, though, did you? So, but we are seeking a commitment from him to deliver m- much better opportunities for the Scottish fleet. I mean, bro, that's not going to happen. The only way you can guarantee it is if you vote in people who are going to guarantee this, who can make this happen. But that's not going to happen, bro. Come, Be real, man. These people just irritate me beyond and Miss MacDonald. Um, so, yeah, they're just saying we need help until 2026. Well, you know, you're not going to get help now and you're definitely not going to... The situation will be the same in and around 2026. Like, 
let's be serious now. In the short term, it will be a case of survival for the industry. I mean, why is it a case for survival for the industry? Is it because of Brexit and the fact that fish are checked when they get to the border? Is that why? But we need we, <laughs> but we want to thrive and to ensure that we can build back this. Oh, stop using his phrases. Stop it. We can build back better or build back this industry. Stop it. I hate that phrase. We need to start planning now. Well, you've got what four? Is it four years until twenty twenty six? Five years? I can't do maths. But um, it's not going to happen. This unicorn deal with fish is not going to happen. Stop! Stop gambling. You know, stop betting the family farm on it, or should I say the the family boat on it? It's not going to happen. They talk about you know, Miss McDonald goes on to say that more renewable energy is clearly vital to the fight against climate change, but we need to also recognise that fish is a healthy protein food stuff with a low carbon footprint compared to other animals and many plant based sources. Now, is that true? Because I would have thought fishing would be um, more kind of it output more carbon compared to um, chicken. Could be wrong on that. She also says, as well as a lack of fishing, uh, a lack of fishing opportunities, the industry is facing a spatial squeeze as offshore wind grows. I mean, okay, like there are multiple problems facing the fishing industry, and Brexit is currently the main one. Which you are, you know, failing to understand that after twenty twenty six, the you're either going to have the same issues you have now, or you're going to face tariffs. Like pick your poison. Neither of them are good. But um, let's not forget here. The golden test for the success of Brexit was fishing. Let's listen to what Mr Farage had to say. And the acid test of Brexit that the voters will face in 2020 is have we got back our territorial waters? Are we like Norway, Iceland, the Faroese? Are we in control? And my suspicion... Fishing. Absolutely. So the acid test for Brexit is fishing? I think it is. And I'll tell you why. It's going to take some considerable courage to say to our European partners, I'm very sorry. I know you've had a fabulous time catching 80% of our fish, but we're actually going to take back what is rightfully ours. That's going to take real leadership and real courage. Yeah, and if that's the case, then Boris Johnson did not show either of those. I just want to go back to the, where was it? There, that facial expression there is so jokes. It's kind of like, you're telling me that the acid test for Brexit is fishing. But yeah, we can say at least at least the Scots are standing up for themselves um, when it comes to fishing. You know, I don't know what the people of Hull are doing and the Kakella or whatever the name of that boat was. Don't know if you guys are just sat on your hands or what. But um, if I were you guys, I would start um, hitting pelters at your local MPs and asking them what the hell. You know, you promised a new dawn for fishing and that hasn't happened. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.